There are a ton of note-taking apps out there for Apple devices, and I've tried just about all of them. If you're looking for a good note-taking app that'll work across all of your Apple devices, you'll want to watch this video to see my top five apps and the one I recommend overall. Let's get started. Welcome to the channel everyone and thanks for clicking on this video. Today I'm going to share my top five note-taking apps with you and talk about the one I'd recommend. Now there really are a ton of note-taking apps out there and I've tried just about all of them. I'm always on the lookout for that one app that's going to be the perfect one and end my search. The problem is, is I end up with all these notes in different apps and, and then I have to search throughout all these different apps that I've been trying out. Well, today I'm going to tell you about four apps that I think work really well, have great design and functionality, and my overall pick that I use every day right now. But before we get started, please like this video if you found it useful and subscribe so you don't miss out on these reviews about apps you might not know about. Okay, so you've got all these note-taking apps out there. You've got Evernote, Simple Note, Obsidian, Bear, Google Keep, Upnote. The list goes on and on. Some of these apps work with both Mac and PC and some are Mac only. Some work with the Apple Pencil in different ways. I have my requirements that I'm looking for in a note-taking app and maybe yours are the same. So my app, uh, my note-taking app needs to have desktop app support and web support. Uh, it needs to have Apple Pencil support to take notes, markdown support, and it's got to work with shortcuts. Okay, here we go. Coming in at number five is Agenda. When you open up Agenda, you have this view of your overview and you can put notes in here. There are slide outs on the left side and on the right side where you can actually view different, uh, you can organize your notes into different projects. And if I click the plus on the bottom left, you can create new projects and new categories. On the right hand side, you have calendar integration and you can tap on a calendar item and create a new note from a template or from, or link a note to an event. So that's a nice feature that you have available as well. For the actual notes itself, if I go into this note that I've created, when you create a written note, it does show this way in this thumbnail view, but you can tap on that and you can choose to display it in line or as a thumbnail thumbnail and title or the full width. So if you choose full width, you'll see the full note there. And if I tap on it again, I can edit and add to the note. And hit done. And now my note is there. And then below you can actually type in your note. Um, I'm using the floating keyboard, but you'll see on the very bottom of the screen you have markdown support here as well. So if I tap on that and an H3, I can create a header there. Next up is Microsoft OneNote. Okay, OneNote is organized in a way where if we go into the app, you have notebooks at the bottom left and then sections within the notebook and then pages within the sections. So I have a Brandon on Tech notebook with a new section and I'm gonna create a new page and then from this, if I click on draw, I can go into a text mode and type in new note. And then I can jump down. And I'm in a text box right now. And the cool thing about uh, OneNote is this text box will float around. So I can actually type on this and move this around to different areas. If I go out of text mode and I actually pick a, a pen, I can type my note. And this one, if I go back to text mode, I can drag this around and it can actually kind of live anywhere within the note itself. So this will work really great if you're already in the Microsoft space. If you use Microsoft products, um, you'll see things here about date and meeting details, stickers. So if I clicked on meeting details, I can link to my calendar here. Um, date will put in today's date, so you have the ability to do things like that. Um, but no actual markdown support on this one. Okay, number three is gonna be Notion. Notion is completely customizable. So if I jump into Notion, 
a um, lot going on here. You can, you can completely customize this with different dashboards and you'll see on the left hand side I've got several different dashboards that I've set up over time. Uh, the first one is Brandon's dashboard that you see here and you can add these different widgets and things on here that you have available. Um, if I go to the journal down below and if I just tap on new to start, this is what your initial note would look like. So you have the ability to type in your note and then when you tap at the bottom, there are these different blocks that you can add in. So you could add pages or to-do lists, headers for markdown support. If I keep going down, um, you can embed drawings and timeline views and you link these to different things. So that is how you work with Notion. Everything is block based. So you create different blocks that give you the ability to put things into your note. Markdown support is in here as is shortcut support. But if you actually want to handwrite a note, you need to rely on a third party for that. So um, that's going to require third party for handwriting support. You'll see from the, the blocks that you have available, there isn't a block for uh, handwriting or writing. Number two is going to be bare. Now, it almost made my number one spot, and I will admit, I keep revisiting Bear to check on it. Bear is a very simple note-taking app. When we look at Bear, on the left-hand side are all of a list of all of my notes, and I can organize those with hashtags. So let's create a new note. I'm going to give it a title, hit enter, and then a markdown support is here. If I do a hashtag and say hi, you'll see the title change uh, for the header. At the bottom right, I can tap on this and I can get my uh, formatting options here as well for different headers and italics, bold. If I want to draw, there's a squiggly line here in the middle. If I tap on that, it'll bring up a pad. And then I've got some options here to either have ruled pages, dots, or grids. And all of these apps have these options as well. If I tap on ruled and put a note here, I can resize this. Or if I need more room, I can add more room here. And then if I tap away, I'll go back to my keyboard and I can pull up my keyboard and put more text in. And then if I hit return, you can even draw with your pencil on this and have that transcribe. So I can transcribe my writing into text here. So really nice if I enter again, I could do a hashtag and then put tag. And that's going to, I should have put that at the bottom, but I could do a hashtag here. And then that's going to create a tag and that's how your notes are organized. And if you needed to do sub folders, you could do a slash, a backslash and put in something else and have different tags for your note. So uh, really clean, there are some options available. It's a uh, subscription based if you go pro on this and then you can choose from different themes that are available, which is really nice. You can change your theme around for your notes. Um, desktop app is supported on this as well. Uh, so you have those options and then you can change your typography and the fonts you're using and everything but at its core it's just a basic note-taking app so there's not a lot to it like you might find with an Evernote or or one of the other apps like even OneNote this is just pure text-based note-taking okay so we've gone through four apps my recommended app is Apple Notes Apple Notes comes with iOS and uh, this is currently the app that I think just works wonderfully with an iPad um, syncing between devices is really nice. Syncing between all five of these devices works, or five of these apps works well too. 
Um, Bear is probably a close second to notes in syncing across devices, but there have been some times where Bear um, doesn't sync or it takes a while for it to, the sync to catch up. Notes has always been just spot on with syncing between devices. So let's go into Notes. And you, the folder structure is on the left-hand side. You create folders, subfolders. They've improved Notes a lot, but it could always probably use a little bit more improvement. Um, if I look at the note area and I compose a note, I can go right into my note taking and handwriting and get my handwriting support here. If we expand the note out, you'll see at the top that you can edit this. So this note is actually going to go in as handwriting support for the title but I can edit this and change the title as well. So I can bring up the keyboard or I could just write here. And this will do the translation of um, my handwriting to a note and done. And that'll rename the note. So let's look at the note itself and talk about some things that are available here. So you can do tables in this note, you can take pictures from this. Um, this Apple Notes is awesome for scanning um, papers and documents that you might have. There are options here at the top. You can lock notes now. There's your scan option. You can pin notes. Um, so all of these are options. And then if you just want to go to regular typing, you can start typing your note here. Okay, so markdown support. Uh, this is my one of my love hates with Apple Notes, but um, it's not completely bad. So at the top, you've got the capital A, lowercase a, if I tap on that, those are formatting options. And here you do get a form of markdown. But true markdown, as in being able to do like a, you can, you can hashtag with tags. But if I did like a hash hash um, space and then header, uh, this is not going to do markdown. Uh, what you would actually need to do is go to your formatting and do your formatting here. So I could do a header, I could do subheader, I could have this as the body. You can do quotes, so they're kind of getting there with markdown support, but it's not completely there yet. Um, it is easy to change this if you, you're here and you decide you don't want the quote, you want to do a header or heading um, or have this as the title. So it's easy to, to quickly do it. You, you also don't have to highlight the whole thing. It's just the line. So it's going to take the line and do whatever the formatting is for that particular line. Uh, so that is how Apple is currently handling Markdown. There are two features that make Apple Notes just stand above uh, any of the other note tech taking apps for me. And the first one is the ability to take your Apple Pencil. I keep my iPad on my desk throughout the day and I, I like to, I feel like I need to take handwritten notes. So what I will do is take my Apple Pencil, I just tap and it opens up a note um, for me. So I could do new note from tap on home screen. This is huge because if you're sitting there and, and there's different options, so you can have a new note happen every time. Um, and then there's a couple options as well. I have a new note every time. So if I'm, my screen is off, I take my Apple pencil, I just tap with it and I've got a new note, uh, just like that. That is a really big, thing for me and my note taking because it's, this really becomes a scratch pad, digital scratch pad that I can take notes throughout the day. I can check back on them, see what notes I've taken in the notes app and then um, make adjustments. I could delete this note if I need to, if I need to copy this information over, I can do that. And your handwritten notes are searchable, which is also a, a kind of a huge thing for me. So if this note stayed like this and I had a phone number or some information down here, I could search those handwritten notes within Apple Notes. The second feature for me is the ability to do a quick note. So if I'm anywhere in my iPad and I swipe up from the bottom right, 
I can bring up a quick note and I can do uh, my handwriting here, pencil, and I can take a note. So very easy, very convenient. I can move this around if I need to. Um, and this goes into Quick Notes and my Apple Notes, and I can reference this again. I can search by it, but it's really easy to just pull this note up from the bottom whenever I need to. You could type as well, or I can go into a writing mode. Choose my writing ink, and I can write from here. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed me going through the top five apps that I would recommend for taking notes and my overall recommendation of Apple Notes. I would love to hear what you guys are using in the comments below. So let me know what app note program you're using and how you take notes. I'm going to be doing some future videos on shortcuts and how I arrange and organize my notes using Apple Notes. If you'd like to see more in-depth reviews on the four other apps that I mentioned, let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe so you're notified when I post new reviews. Talk to you later.